do you want to win at Unstable? We've got some draft tips for you. Unstable is a really cool, awesome set. It is. It's super fun. And what's really cool that I didn't know to expect is that it is super draftable. It is amazing. And like very interesting games happen and very interesting draft picks happen. It's just like, it's awesome and like challenging to play just like any new set. Just It's just legit another magic yeah. set that is actually great to draft. It's so much fun. So first and foremost, we just want to point out that this is meant to be a fun set. Yes. <laughs> okay, so go off. Be nice. Draft whatever the heck you want. Draft a crazy th a scheme yeah. that might not work, and that's totally fine because that's in the spirit of Unstable. Absolutely. However, if you want to beat your friends. <laughs> Remember, again, first, that this is a fun set. <laughs> and that there is going to be more variance than usual. Yes. Uh, Mark Rosewater even said, like, that's something that's fun about this, is that you don't want to put too much variance into... Um, regular sets of magic because that makes it less fun for very competitive players. Right. But with unstable, there is like they can up the variance by having like outside interaction with players and dice, like more dice rolling and all that sort of really cool stuff. Yeah. But if you still want to be able to uh, win <laughs> in a fun way with yes. your friends, uh, we've got some tips because we've drafted it a handful of times. Yep. And this will give you a kind of a leg up on the format. So there's a couple of main themes running through Unstable, and the first one I want to talk about is Augment and Host. Yes. Uh, this happens uh, in all of the colors. Yep. Um, you can get hosts in all of the colors. You can get augments in the colors. Uh, and it's where you have your host creature, which has a mana cost. You can actually ca you know, cast it from your hand. Uh, and it has an enter the battlefield ability. They're everything from maybe rolling a die to gain some life to maybe drawing a card. To destroying something. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. That's right. Eight mana, Angelic. Oof, that card like, is good. Rocket or something, something like something that. Like that. Some Something really it's wild. Absurd. Pack one, pick one right there. It's great. And then augment are cards that you cannot just cast without a host in play. Yep. Um, they don't have a converted mana cost up in the top right hand corner. They have an augment cost. Uh, and this allows you to basically attach them onto the host creatures as though it's almost like an aura kind of. Kind of like an aura, but you're making an abomination to God. <laughs> Instead, you're making something that crazy laboratory scientists dreamed up. And what's going to happen when you augment something onto your host creature is you're going to get an, a modification of that host creature's ETB ability. That's so, right. So in some cases with steam powered, you can pay five and activate that ability. In some cases with humming, once you attack with two creatures, it activates that ability. Yep. So they're all different, um, but they're all really, really cool. So it'll give you more ways to get that trigger that's on that host creature, which is pretty sweet. And it gives you a big boost in stats. Absolutely. So if you're looking to draft host augment, the main two colors are green and white, but as Megan said, they do exist in all color combinations, but those are kind of the two base colors. So if you really want to go all in on that strategy, uh, those are the colors you're going to be looking for. Next up, we've got contraptions. Oh man, contraptions are so awesome. Yeah, so you're drafting contraptions the same as you're drafting the rest of your cards. You know, it's a pick that you make out of a pack. Uh, but when you make your contraption deck, you're making a separate deck for them. They don't go in your normal 40 cards. You no. still gotta have your 40, but you can have a separate contraption deck that can have as many cards as you want in it. So if you've ever drafted a set like Conspiracy, it's kind of like that when you're drafting Conspiracies. You're gonna take, you're gonna use up picks on them, and so you have to be kind of careful to make sure that you have enough playable cards for your 40 card deck in addition to your contraptions. Yep. Uh, another uh, pitfall is making sure that you have enough ways to assemble the contraptions you've actually drafted because you don't get to just put them onto the battlefield whenever you want. They need to be assembled. There's work that goes into making these things. That's right. And you can assemble contraptions, again, in all of the colors, but red and green are going to have just the most volume of yeah. assembling contraptions. And make sure that you are keeping a good ratio, as with a host and augment to host creatures and augment abilities as you are with assemblers and contraptions because you've got to get away to get them out onto the battlefield. 
last is dice rolling. Woo, dice rolling. Uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to be rolling a lot of dice. Wait, 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 wait. Cards. What? What is dice rolling? It, you're rolling dice. OK, got it. Wild, I know. Sweet. And so in, in Unstable, there's ways to not only roll dice, but ways to influence the dice that you have rolled by yeah. like kind of whispering into their little dice ear and having them change to a higher or lower result. You can sometimes make uh, people re-roll their dice, or you can re-roll your own dice. Uh, like Maria said, you can adjust those totals up and down. Pretty sweet. The main colors for dice rolling are black and green, so that is something to note. So, moving on to our straightforward tips. First of all, you have to be doing something powerful, which is kind of surprising because you think, hey, it's a fun set. Yeah. Uh, I can spend a lot of my time goofing around. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. You need to be goofing around powerfully. Powerfully, <laughs> powerfully goofing around. That's just also advice for life, uh, yep. generally. If you want to succeed. <laughs> Goof around powerfully. <laughs> you know, this set is kind of like a master set in a way that those sets are super powerful and you want to make sure that you're uh, doing powerful things else you're going to kind of get left in the dust from the people you're playing against. It's the same in Unstable. Yeah. You've, uh, some of these cards are just crazy powerful and you've got to be doing something on an equal footing if you want to end up the victor. One great example is Host and Augment. Uh, if you are not able to interact with Host and Augment creatures or you're not the person making Host and Augment creatures, you're going to be in trouble because they get huge. The same thing goes for contraptions because there are some darn good contraptions in this set, like yeah. Fairy Airy. Can we just talk about this for a second? People are calling it Better Blossom because it's just a better version of Bitter Blossom. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. And if you don't have a way to interact with your opponent's contraptions, guess what? You're going to die to them. So yeah. artifact removal in this set, I would keep an eye out for it because it's going to be better than in most sets. So I think reading signals in this format is important. Uh, the same way that reading signals in a tribal format is very important, knowing what's open to you coming from your right. Because there, like as we said at the top of this video, there's a couple of strategies that are pretty clear cut. And while you can obviously go outside them and do crazy things the way that you want, you want to make sure that whatever your main strategy is, is open and it's being passed to you. One great example is in one of the drafts that we did, um, Maria was passing to Mark Rosewater. Yeah. And she, she was taking a lot Lot of uh, she was doing a lot oh, of host yeah. and augment and mark was also trying to do host and augment but he ended up not getting <laughs> augment cards so he had a lot of really great hosts but but he didn't have the augment cards that he needed also did you like my really smooth name drop in that there? was great very smooth name drop. taste it mark rosewater yeah <laughs> Our next tip is while contraptions are really cool because they're a repeatable effect, it's important that when you're making your contraptions deck or you're drafting contraptions, um, unless you're going to be assembling just a ton of them, again, you're like maybe you're really heavy in red green and you just have like a dozen All ways to assemble samples. contraptions, um, then you're gonna wanna, you know, have a really big contraptions deck. Otherwise, if you've only got like three or four ways to assemble, I would narrow that contraptions deck down to just the best one or two. Yeah, make it count. Yeah. Because, because if, you're, if you're assembling a contraption, it's like, and it's a rare occasion for you to be assembling one, you yeah. want to assemble the one that makes your creature unblockable when you're behind. Yeah. Womp womp. That just doesn't feel good. Exactly. You want to make sure that if you're going to maybe assemble one to two contraptions over the course of the game, make them count, man. Yeah, absolutely. I played a contraptions deck and I started off with nine contraptions in my contraptions deck. And then through the course of the day, I whittled it down to something like four because I was like, when I hit, I want to hit big. So host and augment is a super powerful ability and some of them are good, even if you can only trigger them one time. Yeah. So uh, something like multi-headed, I made the mistake of not playing at first because I was looking at it and it was like, okay, I have enough hosts, but I don't have a lot of dice rolling. And multi-headed is an augment that triggers that ability every time that you're rolling dice during a turn. Uh, and I was like, that's, I mean, like, I'm never going to get the ability again. So like, why would I even play it? Well, I missed that multi-headed <laughs> gives the creature plus four, plus four to its stats. And that's permanent. Pretty handy. Like that's just makes an enormous creature. Yeah. I which, mean, just good enough. Period. Exactly. So sometimes um, there's augments that you're only going to want to take because it's like, oh, I'll be able to trigger these awesome abilities again and again on my hosts. But sometimes you're going to look at an augment and it's just like, yeah, do you know what? Humming gives flying. And that's, that's great. That's great. Good enough. Good man. enough. And I just want to take this moment to make a side note. You brought up flying. 
flying in this set, I think, is absurdly powerful. It is very powerful. Uh, it's it's very, very true. The Novella Mentals, which are 2-1 flyers for two, they can only so block flyers. Good. Who cares? They're really, really yeah. good. There is not a lot of ways to deal with flying. Not a lot of creatures have reach. I think there's one monkey that randomly has reach, and that's yeah. like it. Yep. And there's willing test subject. Willing test subject, and I can't remember a card that kills a creature with flying. Maybe it exists, but like... I don't think so. Flying, I think, is an easy way for you to gain an advantage in this set uh, because your opponents are probably going to have a hard time dealing with unless they've drafted flyers as well. Um, and you can just beat down. One thing that's surprising about Unstable is that if you draft a lot, you've probably heard, hey, don't draft one drops. Like, they're barely ever worth it. But in Unstable, there's actually a lot of really good one drops that you can totally draft. Yeah, that's so true. I noticed when I drafted a Contraptions deck that uh, you want, by the way, more assemblers than you think you want. If your deck yeah. was all assemblers, it would be fine. It would be great. Um, and so there's a card, Wrench Rigger, which is just a 1-1 one, one for a single red that assembles a Contraption when it enters the battlefield. That card is that wild. Probably good. Busted. It's so good. Because not you're getting a 1-1, one, one, okay, sure, whatever, but you're assembling a contraption, which essentially means you're playing a planeswalker. On and that like you start activating it the next turn because you can put it on the first sprocket. Yeah. And it's Boom. just like there you go. And if, if you've drafted your contraptions deck correctly and you've just put in good contraptions, well, you're like, oh, great. For example, can we just talk for a brief moment about favorite contraptions? Yeah. The one that gives plus two, that gives a plus two, plus two counter. Yeah. Insane. Absolutely. Um, like you can play Wrench Ringer on, wrench, wrench Ringer on turn one. It assembles that contraption and then like it's a 3-3. Oh, it's three. a 3-3 three, three forever now. It has those counters. Great. Inflation Station, also great. Yeah, it gives plus three, plus three. So good. Um, there's one that's even like that assembles more contraptions. Yeah. So you could just already get, like get on a roll from the very beginning. Yeah. Right. I love it. What's one of your other favorite one drops? Um, another one of my favorite one drops is Adorable Kitten. Adorable Kitten. Not only cute, powerful. Yeah. So you uh, Adorable Kitten, uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to roll a six sided die and gain that much life. Um, but it's a host creature, which is like one of the best things about it. There's so many different ways that you can reactivate that ability. And I've just, I just gained absurd amounts of life <gasps> over the course of some games. I would be at like 30 something life it's in the insane. middle of the game. And you know what? If you make half kitten, half kitten, that is actually one of the most powerful it's so host augments good. you can make. Half kitten says uh, whenever you're dealt damage. So it's just like whenever you're dealt damage, roll a six sided die and gain life. It was dumb because I attacked my opponent and I'm like, okay, take two. And they're like, all right, roll my die. All right, I gain three life. So essentially, so like they gain, I gain life gain off your attack. <laughs> it's so good. Great. So good. <laughs> so Mark Rosewater's sick name drop uh, told us that <laughs> something he wants to do in Unstable is go all in on a single faction. So you'll notice that watermarks matter in this set. And those uh, watermarks correspond to the factions, the different factions, like the Agents of Sneak, the Goblin Explosioneers, that kind of thing. And you can pay attention when you're drafting and kind of go all in and take advantage of the benefits you get from drafting a single single faction in this set. And I think that'd be super fun. Absolutely. Like, there's different lands that you can get where if they're the right faction, then they'll tap for any color of mana as yeah. long as they're casting that watermark and really cool stuff like that. Uh, another tip is to make sure that you're playing with different sleeves. Oh, yeah. Because there's a a lot of really cool stuff in this set where you can be potentially like putting your opponent's cards into your own hand. That's something you'll never see in Black Bordered Magic, which I think is really cool. Great. It's so cool. So yeah, Unstable, overall, I give this set an A. I think it is incredibly fun to draft. It is so much. a real so magic set. It's not just nonsense. It drafts like a real set. Some of the stuff is absurd and powerful, like cards like Spike Tournament Grinder, for example, is just completely nutty, and you can get something like Uma, Umazawa's Jite if you wanted. Yep. Or you can play Scheherazade, as we saw Wedge do on the pre, pre-release and do a sub-game. Um, but other than that, like, if you're taking out stuff like Spike Tournament Grinder or whatever, this card is, this set is just a normal magic set and is a total blast to draft. So go out there and have a great time. 